Well, good evening. Good to have everyone out tonight, and I'm going to ask those of you that will to join us in the choir. We're going to sing out of our black book tonight. Come on up.
Amen. That was a great song there. I believe he's coming back, and, and I know he's coming back, and we need to be prepared to go when he does come. And, you know, in life, the Word of God teaches us how to live our life and how to bear the fruits that, that God wants us to bear. And I would like for us to think about that tonight. And, you know, as we examine and, and I, as I study the Word, I look at my life as I study it and see what God is, is telling me in my life. And, and he teaches us how to bear the fruit that, that he would have for us to bear. So if you got your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 15, and we'll, we'll look in the, the scripture and see what, what God is telling us here. And there's, there's some steps that we have to take in our life to be able to bear the fruits of God. And he talks about he is the true vine. So he has made the way for us to bear fruit if we will be obedient unto what he says uh, for us to do. And, and as we look into the scripture, it's very clear what he's saying about how to, to bear the fruits. And there's, there's three things that he talks about. He talks about us cleaning up our life, then being obedient unto the word of God, and then... Uh, abiding in the word of God, abiding in the way, staying in the way. So tonight as we, we you know, examine our life, uh, it's this, let's look and see if there's any of the fruits. And I'll, I'll read you in just a few minutes the fruits of the Spirit. But uh, starting in, in John chapter 15, verse 1, and, and look at this as we go down through here. Uh, first of all, he's talking about, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Now, he's saying here that, that he is the, the vine, and that we have to trust in him, believe that he is the vine. And, and he said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. And he says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So here in, in the first uh, three verses, he's talking about cleansing. And, and as we look in the scripture and look at our life and we see that, that he says he is the vine and we're the branches. And, and he's talking about our life here now, how that, that our life can bear fruit. Now, we always like to look at somebody else's life and think, well, that they need to do this or they need to do that. The way that we're going to have the fruits of the Spirit is to look at our own life and, and then look at the Scripture and see what the Scripture is telling us, how that I can bear fruit. And, and Jesus is explaining it here. He's saying, I am the vine. And he said, for you to be able to bear fruit, you've got to clean your life up. And that's what he's talking about. Uh, uh, clean, you are clean through the word. We look into the word. We see what the word says. The word teaches us things that we can do and things that we can't do. Plus the Holy Spirit lives with inside of us uh, a leading and a guiding us. So, first of all, uh, he is the vine. Then we look at our life and how am I going to bear these fruits? And it's by cleaning up my life. Now, we say, well, I got saved and, and that's as far as I, I, I need to go. I look at my life. Yes, I got saved. But as I was growing in the Lord, I was a babe in Christ. And as I was growing in the Lord, God would speak to my heart, and as he was speaking, there was things in my life that still I had to prune up, get, get out of the way, clean up, get these things out of my way to where I could be fruitful in the Lord. And that's what he's speaking to all of us tonight, is, is uh, the, everything is took care of, the vine is already there, 
we're the branches, and if we want the fruits that I'm going to read to you in a minute, we're going to have to clean up uh, this life and, and do what God says. Then he goes on down in verse 4, and he's talking about abiding. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, of itself, except it abide in the vine, and no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Now, here he's talking about us abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ, staying in the path, staying with God, and staying with the Word of God. Not just bouncing in and out, bouncing here and there, but staying in the path, in the word, staying on the vine. Now, he said, Madison or Diane or any one of us, you can do nothing of yourself. We can't do nothing on our own. But through him, we can do all things. So uh, here he talks about cleaning up our life. Then he goes on down in verse 4. And he talks about abiding. And then it goes on down to where uh, it's getting a little harder now. And he's talking about obedience. Uh, being obedient unto God and to the Word of God. Being faithful to the Word of God. Being faithful to God. Being faithful in serving God. Being faithful in, in, in doing all that God is telling us to do. But we've got to keep it in our, in our hearts and in our minds that he is the vine. And without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we can't have a spirit-filled service to where we're going to uh, uh, have the spirit of God in here that is going to uh, speak to our hearts and, and show us where we're not abiding and where we're not uh, cleaning up our lives, but with him. And people, it's sad to say, but our world uh, and, and a lot of the churches is falling into that, that, that they're not listening to the Spirit. They're not following. They're not abiding in the vine. And with God, everything is not all right out here in this world. Uh, God says this is the way it's going to be. And if, if you're going to be a part of me, you're going to have to clean up your life, you're going to have to abide with me. You're going to have to stay with me. Uh, and then we're going to have to be obedient unto him, doing what he says to do. As I read on, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same. Now he said here, he said, Madison, if you abide in me and you stay, you clean your life up, and you be obedient to me, then there's going to be the, the, the same bringeth forth much fruit. He said, here, uh, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And he said, now, Madison, you, you clean up your life. You allow God to come in. And, and then you abide in the word. You stay in the word. You trust in the word. And you're going to be able to bear fruit. And, and for without me, you can do nothing. Without God, I can't stand here. Without God, I can't understand what he's saying here in this scripture. But if I look into that scripture, and I can picture him as the vine, and me as a branch, and then I can take myself and, and look at this, and God is saying to me, clean your life, uh, then you stay faithful, you abide with me, and you'll be able to bear fruit. And that's what he's talking about to all of us. And people, uh, as we go over there and we talk about here in just a minute in Galatians, and we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, now think about, uh, well, let me just jump over there and I'll come back to this in a minute. But think about this. The fruits of the Spirit is found in Galatians chapter uh, 5 and verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now think about this. you taking all of this home with you. you taking this with your wife or your husband and your children, your parents, 
everywhere you go, you take this and what a difference it would make in your life. The fruits of the Spirit is love. Now God said, Madison, you can have all of these. If you'll clean your life up, you'll abide in me, and then you be obedient unto me. Now, the fruits of the Spirit is love and joy. Don't you like to be around somebody that's loving? Somebody that has joy? Does that not flow out to you and make you feel so much better? You don't like to be around an angry person. Uh, it's just not, it's not comfortable. And, and it's not, not fun to be around an angry person. But now, just think about you being able to abide in this vine, which is Jesus Christ, and then you're, you're cleaning up your life and you're obedient unto what God says, and then you're staying faithful to God. He's saying, you're in this vine, and then what is in this vine is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance and all of these things that God says that comes out of this vine, which is Jesus Christ, comes into us because we're the branches. And we are going to bring forth that fruit. So that's what God is saying that, that every one of us. Now, here's the, the bad side of this. We're all living in an old, weak, fleshly vessel. And the only way that we can crucify and, and get... but but he goes on and he tells us this. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Now you see, the only way that we can get rid of this old flesh is, is that we abide in him and we start bearing this fruit and crucifying the fleshly man. Not feeding him, but crucifying him. And getting rid of him. And then we're able to do what God says. But going back over here in uh, verse, I'll read verse 5 again. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth uh, much fruit. There we are abiding in him. And without me, you can do nothing. And I realize that in my life. Without him, I can do nothing. And then on down through here, he talks about, when we get on down in verse 10, he talks about uh, being obedient. But let's go on down. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And then, uh, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they shall be burned. I mean, Diane was picking up brush the other day. And those that were still on the tree, and that were green, we left alone because they could bring forth fruit. But all of that that was dead, laying on the ground, we picked up because it was no good but to be burned. You see, and that's what he's talking about, me and you. Now, are we a, a fruitful branch? Every one of us can be. And these are the things that you can take home and make your life and your family so much better. But how we do that is, is, is doing what the Scripture says, is by, first of all, we clean up our life, then second of all, we abide in Him, which is the truth, the Word of God in Jesus Christ. And then as he goes on, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, this is verse 7, in other words, if you will abide in me, Jesus is saying, and my words abide in you. We know the words, the words is in our hearts and in our minds, and, and whenever we get to start to drift off out of the will of God, the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts, and we have that choice at that time. Do I ask God for strength, and do I ask God for, for help, or do I just follow on down the way the, the, the flesh is wanting to lead me? and then it will bring death. Uh, so as we, we look on, he says, you, you, you shall ask what, what you will, and it shall be done unto you. 
So if we ask God to strengthen us, ask God to give us help in the times that we need it, God will do that. Herein is my Father glorified. God is glorified whenever we trust in him, whenever we look at our life and say, well, this is not pleasing to God, so I'm going to lay this aside, and I'm going to stay faithful in the word of God and trust God, and then as, as God sees this, uh, it, it brings uh, glory to him. And as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. And then, here he's talking about obedience and staying with God. If ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall abide in me and my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And these things have I spoken unto you that that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now, God wants your joy to be full. Uh, Mamas and daddies, children, uh, God is saying here in this scripture, and he's telling us there's fruits that you can produce in your life that is going to bring joy to your whole family. Now, think about this, thinking about taking all of this, to uh, home with you, and what a difference it would make in your life and the people's lives around you. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Now, Jesus said, you're my friend, if you do what I command you. And, and he is telling us to abide in him, clean up our lives, get our lives where it needs to be, and then that, that wonderful uh, uh, peace, that wonderful uh, uh, joy, love, and all of these fruits of the Spirit is going to flow through us. And then we're able to allow whoever's around us, to enjoy these fruits that God is allowing us to bear. Now, these are the fruits of the Spirit. The vine, you are the branches, and then the fruits of the Spirit comes through us, through Him first, and into us, and into all the others around us. And that's what He's saying. But the fruit of the Spirit is... You can have this. You can take this home with you. You can take this to the work, to your workplace. You can bring this to your church. Your life is this. I want you to see a big grapevine, which is representing Jesus Christ. I want you to see you as a branch off of this grapevine. And then I want you to see what fruits is coming from your life. And this is what should be coming from every one of our lives is love and joy. God wants you to love one another. God wants you to have joy in your heart. And God wants you to bring this to your families. Now think about this. This is what God's saying. So first of all, we clean up our life. Second, uh, we abide in him. And then third, we're obedient unto him. And that is whenever he promises us that if we do that, that these things will be a part of our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And then he goes on and he tells me in his word right here in verse 24 of Galatians uh, chapter 5. Chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So tonight, I believe that God is showing us how to have the fruits of the Spirit. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand tonight. I don't know your heart. God knows every one of our hearts. And God is able to meet our needs. But if you see a need in your life, and God has spoke to you tonight, the altar's open, I want you to come.
and we'd be happy to, to pray with you tonight. So is there one anywhere tonight that would like to pray? You come forth right now if there is. All right. Now, uh, Wednesday night, we all ought to come in here filled with, with the love and joy and peace in our hearts because God has showed us in the Scripture how to have that. So let us pray. Our Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit, God, that is teaching us your word. And, God, we pray, Lord, that there would be fruits in our life. Lord, I know that you are the vine, and, Lord, we are the branches. And, God, I pray that this great fruit could flow out of my life and that people around me would realize where it comes from, and it comes from you, Father. And, Lord, we all desire that, and I'm praying, God, that you'd help each and every one of us to have that. So thank you, Lord, tonight for this service. Thank you for everyone that's here. And I pray your blessings be upon each and every one of us. Go with us into this week and keep us safe and meet our needs and help us to be back here to worship you. So thank you, God, for everything, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate you coming. You're free to go.